yourself and from that you can try and work out uh, what's going on. But Club Lady Day is the brainchild uh, of Sandra Joseph, uh, who, let me tell you, when I met this woman, you know, uh, some people, you know, you hear the saying where you say some people just touch your spirit. She, to me, is one of those women. Ever since I met her and I just, I just loved her spirit, loved her uh, energy. And as I say, she's the founder of Club Lady Day. It's an empowerment club for women. And she's also qualified in various other things, but I'm gonna let her tell you the story herself. All I'm gonna say is this, is that she's a lecturer, she's a trainer, motivational speaker and she will motivate you make no mistake about that personal performance and confidence coach and she's also uh, preparing to release her book uh, as it's in the works at the moment sandra thank you so much for coming in this morning how are you i'm very well thank you marisha thank you very much for having me you're very welcome um i'm sorry we're having a couple of technical issues but we'll work around them i'm okay i can hear you Brilliant. Right, so give me a little bit of history. Tell me, why did Sandra Joseph get up one day and decide, after having a background in hairdressing and other things, that she was going to set up Club Lady Day? Right, well, basically, actually, it wasn't really me that got up one morning and thought about Club Lady Day. It's actually, uh, I've got to put the credit to my partner, Michael Furtado, okay. who um, actually is the brainchild behind the Club Lady Day. He, f he had a vision of this club and um, I wasn't dating him at the time. I knew him, but I wasn't dating him. But the um, idea but, uh, helped. So, well, yeah, <laughs> you could say that, yeah. Uh, so, so he had the idea, but really what it was, because uh, he had the idea, and obviously it's a club for women, he needed a woman to run the club, yeah? So um, obviously when we got together um, officially, mm. uh, that's when basically it kicked off. So um, the idea was actually his, but then I basically evolved and manifested the idea with more ideas of my own. So tell us, what is Club Lady Day? Club Lady Day basically is, um, as it says, lady in the title. It is a club for women. And um, mainly we're looking at entrepreneurs, um, women who are um, in um, the corporate world, and they have um, senior positions or um, really just women who want to get out there and um, work on their own personal development you know the ones that really want to don't want to stay doing the same things day in day out they want to they want more in life and they want to contribute to the community now this is the thing because for many that's kind of maybe doing a little bit of networking or a couple yeah. of workshops your approach is different to that yeah yeah so give us an example of the sort of day you would have with Club Lady Day. Yeah, well, um, we do so many different things. Like it could be anything from a um, personal development workshop. Um, it could be I doing courses for um, public speaking as well, helping people to, to speak or do presentations. Mm -hmm. Because again, like I say, they don't have to be an entrepreneur or businesswoman. They could just be in, in that position where they have to do a presentation in the workplace. Um, so um, the public speaking courses goes down well for those sort of um, type of women. Also, um, we do things like um, excursions as well. Even if it's different continents, we do um, trips abroad, um, we do pamper days, spa, spa weekends. So it can, it can really vary from the serious sit down in the classroom course work, yeah. you know, the mentality of things, to going away and having some fun. And sometimes that fun could be a day trip to Ascot, or it could be the lower scale as a day trip going paintballing. So yeah. it's like dress up or no makeup day girls. That's you know, it, so and I'm going to shoot you with a paintball. Exactly. <laughs> it's really anything that I put my mind to and I think, oh, yeah, let me do a trip for that. Mm. You know, so really anything, you know, mothers and daughters, grandmothers, everyone's welcome, or even sometimes family day trips to the seaside. So we don't exclude wholeheartedly the men folk. Okay. Because obviously some of the trips, they, they're more than welcome to come along. Lovely. Now, you... As there's been a bit of focus around women, mm -hmm. why did you, why did you, if you like, buy into the idea, as you say, your partner gave it to you, you've taken it, you've run yeah. with it. Is it something that you feel is important for women to have as a space? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I find that it's something that I really want to target women more specifically. Um, with my lecturing background, when I first got into coaching, 
the first thing I've done was, well, how can I generate clients? And mm. I think with a lot of coaches, that is the hardest point, generating the clients, because Absolutely. the clients then become, you know, your ongoing and referrals. Yeah, yeah? Absolutely. So, um, what I've done is schools and places that I worked at, I just went back into there saying, well, you know me, <laughs> now I'm coaching. What about doing um, a course? I've got a six-week course that I can put on for the parents. Because I was thinking about, there's a lot of mums at home that bring the kids to school, then mm. they go home and do the usual kind of houseworks and whatnot, and maybe do a little bit of crafts or go out there and do a little course and stuff. Yeah. So I thought to myself, well, yeah, a personal development course for, for women or, or any of the parents, it could have been male, it doesn't mm. really matter. So I first started off with personal development six-week courses in schools. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then it's that's what and sort then of it grown. escalated from main, mainly women because basically what it was it was mainly women mm. that were coming to the courses and I, I'm just assuming that it's just the stereotypical of mostly women being at home with the children yeah. while they're at school. Yeah, no, indeed. No, I like that. So I want to move it on a little bit because mm. I also know that uh, part of your journey um, includes disability in mm -hmm. the world of business and my question to you is how do you perceive biz the business world deals with that do we deal with it well or actually is there still work to be done oh there is Anna, always is there work to be done i mean the viewers are, uh, who's listening now so not the viewers but the listeners mm -hmm. um they obviously know that there's always work to be done mm -hmm. right and i'm not saying that there's work to be done as me as a black individual mm -hmm. right but in general for yeah. anyone with a disability right now um i wouldn't really class myself as having a disability I'm glad because you said i'm that. able yes. to do what i need to do and oh. it's hidden to be fair it, it's you, hidden you hide it's, it very well yeah 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 um for the viewers who who don't know i am actually partially deaf and i wear um the use of hearing aids in both ears usually and um well it's never stopped me from lecturing i've been lecturing for 20 years it's never stopped me from doing what i needed to do mm. but what i'm trying to say is um when it comes to a disability if you want to put it that way um people do look at you differently mm. right so i want to dispel the myths of disability exactly and um, that's it and maximize um, the equal opportunity for all people you know I, i've been to interviews and i've been on on the board um because i actually have been um the curriculum coordinating manager at city college before it was merged um as the viewers uh, the listeners would know it's south and city now yeah south and city so before it was south and city it was city college and i was um the department manager for the beauty side and um, when we had meetings with the principal and you know distinguished people as they, they put it as they call themselves um, yeah <laughs> they see the hearing aids and they think well you know, people get a, a wrong, the, the, judging get, the book by the cover, exactly. so to speak. Yeah. And then when I start speaking, it's like, oh, I wasn't, you know, you, I, I had no, I, you speak very clearly. Yeah. You speak very clearly, indicating that they're expecting slurred, the typical person who has very, got a lot of hearing loss. So yeah. obviously, you know, they speak to how, what they can hear. Yeah. You know, so, um, and and when it's something that you can see a disability that you can see i.e a wheelchair user someone who's got exactly. one leg and you can clearly see that they've got cl clutches or whatnot um people treat them in a different way to the ones that are hidden yeah the hidden yeah dis so-called disabilities well this is the thing and i mean it's why i wanted to mention it because by by no stretch is it something that defines what you do. I mean, as mm. I say, I, I love your spirit. You're a formidable woman. But I actually also feel like it becomes an additional challenge on top of the challenges that, you know, women in general will face in business. Absolutely. Young people face in business. It becomes another thing. Absolutely. You know, and maybe what it made me think about was our education. Yeah. As in the education of people with so-called who are who are so-called not disabled yeah you know but again or it could be hidden so we're not seeing yeah. it but the education of that for them to understand Absolutely. accessibility yeah yeah we, we do need to educate the people out there when it comes to hidden disabilities and they need to start thinking about what else what other hidden disabilities are there out there that i am not um educated enough to deal with you know especially in the workplace if you're a manager out there and you've got people 
who apply for jobs, for instance, um, they need to put things in place in mm. order to make it easier for somebody, i.e. like myself, um, you know, if I'm in an office and the phone's ringing and stuff, and even someone with good hearing, sometimes you never know what the person's going to sound like on the other end of the phone. Indeed. Sometimes people have just naturally got a very quiet low voice haven't they yeah you absolutely. know and sometimes i hear even good hearing person sometimes i have to say well can you repeat that yeah because they're just not speaking loud enough or clearly you know so um you could imagine if it's somebody like me so something in an office environment um the, the phones need to be a certain type of phone you know yeah. um mini comms could be put in place and stuff but the thing is the bottom line is a lot of companies don't want to spend the money yeah, and they're you not know, making certain allowances. things to make allowances for mm. people to do their job effectively. Yeah, and uh, and it's a shame. And I think it, I think what it is, it is a lack of knowledge because what they don't realise. I mean, you say spend the money often, that it would be comparative. You know, yeah. when you look at a telephone system, for example, they're expensive anyway. Yeah. To have those little add-ons actually is no real cost. It's about awareness. Yeah. Absolutely. and asking for it okay brilliant i love that so bringing it back to club lady day yeah. and bringing it back to what it's uh, what you're all about you talked about um wanting to encourage women to build stronger ties oh, tell yes. me about that right well the idea of ties i was looking at um trying to put um what's it called acronym yeah an acronym. um to the word ties right so um the um, the T stands for transform, right? And if you think about transform, it's trans. When you think about trans, you're thinking of transcend. Yes. Transaction. Transatlantic. Transcribe, right? It's to move it's into another state or place. Yeah. So to transform somebody mm. um, was very much an ethos that I live by. Yeah. You know, I, I like to... If I know that somebody it can do better for themselves... I have to draw it out of them. <laughs> I just have to. Because I know I can see it in them. Yeah. You know, it's just the same way when, before I became a lecturer, my teacher saw it in me that I could make a good lecturer. Mm -hmm. And she says to me, have you ever thought of teaching? And I was like, uh, what? Me? No. You know, and of course I didn't have no confidence at that time because of, of my disability, my mm. partially deafness, how am I going to hear a room full of 30 students and you know what they like when they get gossiping, Yes. Right? <laughs> all at one time, it was just like, that just really put me off, you yeah. know, it took yeah. me a year to decide that I'm going to go for it, so oh. someone believed in me, mm. and I'm the type of person, who, when I can see something in someone, I need to draw it out of them, so oh. basically that transform is, is for the T, mm -hmm. the I is inspire, um, and as we say, right, sometimes people, it's, it's a feeling, uh, it's a supposed creative force or influence that stimulates production of work or, or action, inspires someone to do something or yeah. action something, yes, right? So um, it's a trigger. And I sort of look at that word, inspire. Um, I think a lot of your listeners could um, relate to the phrase, inspired by God. Yes. So in that sense, it's that feeling yeah mm. but it makes them action yes yeah mm. so that's the i the e <laughs> stands for empower right so empower basically the latter part of power right um is um, um give to give power to make able it's an authorization it's a license license to do license to kill or whatever right you know <laughs> yeah i say license to kill because i think it must yeah, be yeah we all know that, that phrase yeah? yeah exactly right and the last one is s for support and that's um carry all or part of the weight yes so that's what i would do i would carry part of i can't say all right part of the weight of people that i want to support right and give them more strength as we know the club is a club for women so the strength in numbers as mm -hmm. you know and um, really just to encourage so that's basically where the ties come from and that goes on to the mission and the ethos of club lady day now, I always ask what words of inspiration you would give to listeners um, in terms of, you know, what you'd be saying to them about not just getting involved with Club Lady Day, mm -hmm. but what it's all about for you. Right. Well, I would say um, with the listeners now, right, 
if they wanted to get involved with Club Lady Day, it's not a matter of them just getting involved with me, it's me getting involved with them as right. well. Right, it's a two-way thing. Yeah. No way is it just all about me. Not absolutely not. Um, so